Welcome to the Crux of Ja- No, you know what? I'm kind of done. Look, I've now reviewed six entire Wolfenstein titles in a row, and the last three have been pretty much the same game in different clothes. I'm just burnt out, man. For my 2009 video, I had to resort to rhyming in limerick form to stay sane, but that's not going to cut it this time. So to hell with it, let's just take it easy, just this once. No hour-long analysis, no in-depth look at the censorship, no comparisons to the voice acting, not even any chapters. Let's just chat about the game a bit. Because honestly, there really isn't that much to talk about in the first place, and you'll soon see why. If you do, hi! Probably the worst time to start, really. Go watch the previous video to get a better idea of what the series is about. If not, then I hope this is comprehensible enough. So, let's actually start with the voice acting this time, because there honestly isn't much to talk about at all. In fact, there's barely any cutscenes or even story to begin with. I'm not going to be talking about anyone whom we already know from previous games, like PJ and Anya, since it's not like they changed much anyway. The only one who has changed is Grace, who is now voiced by Dagmar Demp instead of Francesca Pigula, because she actually died the same year the game came out. And Demper does a good job at picking up the torch in the few scenes she's actually in. Und wenn dieser Bastard BJ Blaskowitz nicht gefunden werden will, dann wird ihn auch keiner auf diesem verdammten Planeten finden. All right, let's look at the new character, starting with everyone's favorite pair of twins, Jess and Soph. Now, I know that everybody hates them, but I don't, so I will talk about them. Let's start with Jess, who was voiced by Valerie Rose Lohman in the original, which made her the number one reason of why I was interested in the game in the first place. Because not only is Lohman an incredible actress and voice actress who has started in multiple games and TV series before, but they also portrayed one of my favorite video game characters of all time, Edith Finch. A lot of this isn't going to make sense to you, and I'm sorry about that. I'm just gonna start at the beginning, with the house. When I learned that she was in Youngblood as well, I knew I needed to play it. Though ironically, I played the German version instead, and also tragically, I have no idea who voices her here. And this actually goes for all the new characters, since the credits only list the roles of the English actors, and not even the Korn form was any help. But she is pretty much fine, sounding just like an easily excitable teenager. Kind of a brat, yet loving towards her family, Pretty mature, but still wants to be taken seriously, and she does not stop gushing about her interests. Ah, Kinder. Hey, was ist das, Abby? Ein Abhörgerät. Sieht aus wie aus Arthur und Kenneth. Hast du das gebaut? Jupp, da sind Arthur und Kenneth. Hast du etwa nicht die geheimen Abenteuer von Arthur Pennington und Kenneth Van Holzhauser gelesen? Lebst du hinter Boot oder was? Da, nimm! Mir fehlt die Zeit zum Lesen. Also Arthur and Kenneth are super spione, okay? And they are having lust yet. And the same goes for Soph too, which makes sense considering how close they are. You really can't talk about one without also talking about the other because they're so closely knit. And that shows the most when they're bantering, constantly insulting the other sister while never actually meaning any harm. Wow, good for you, Kenneth. I thought you already have the killer in sight. Leck me, Arthur. Hey, you two. You're so nice to each other. What? Das ist ein Kompliment. Halt die Klappe. <lacht> Was würden Arthur und Kenneth tun? Das sind Figuren aus einer Geschichte, Jess. Ich weiß, du blöde Kuh. Ich denk nur laut nach. Ich Bist du bereit, Kenneth? Ich bin bereit geboren, Arthur. Schwör ab. Vollpfosten. Zwing mich doch. Kotzbrocken. <lacht> I think that's where these characters shine the most, which does make sense, as it's a story about sisters. Unlike BJ, who was very experienced, almost past his prime, these two haven't fully matured yet, they're still trying to prove themselves. And once they do, they're really proud of themselves, which comes across incredibly well during that one infamous scene that everybody despises, namely when they get their first kill. And come on, why would you hate this moment? Because they're acting in a weird, over the top manner? You mean to tell me that teenagers act a bit strangely and silly sometimes? 
No, say it ain't so. What completely overblown criticism. Let them be stupid for once, we all were, and they've really earned it. It's certainly refreshing after hearing BJ Mobile round three games in a row. But despite being so similar, there's still some depth to their characters. For instance, Jess seems a bit more worried and hesitant, while Soph is pretty much a daredevil, to the point of downright being a doofus. Und wenn wir Papa nicht finden, Soph? Was dann? Wir sind die Blaskowitz schwestern Jess. Wenn es so sein sollte, werden wir damit fertig. Tread Slackbottom ist echt lustig. <laughs> It's kind of a yin and yang situation, where each of them has their own strengths and weaknesses that make up for what the other lacks. By themselves, they're strong, but together, they're unstoppable. And you can absolutely tell that when they're talking to each other during combat, really showing that they're on the same wavelength and know exactly what to say to the other one. They come, Jess. Lass sie nur kommen. I will say though, some of those lines got a bit much at times. They were fine at first, but not so fine after hearing them 20 times in a row. The worst offender was this one, which I can't even faithfully translate into English. It's a perfect blend of sounding strange and being annoyed to listen to that I groaned each time I heard it. Though, that's not a fault of the dub at all, just a problem with hearing the same voice line over and 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 over again. Now, Abby is... okay. She doesn't really show many emotions in either version of the game, so there's nothing to discuss either. Oh, and woher weißt du das? Wollner Unterleib, schnelle Atmung, sein Bauchfell ist schwer entzündet und das kann Sepsis und Tod zur Folge haben. Er braucht Antibiotika. Oh, komm mal her und hilf mir, hm? Ich verzichte. I think what would have helped was giving her a bit more of a backstory and screen time like they did with Reyes, but that's more flaw the writing than anything. Juju, on the other hand, does have a bigger presence, but I wouldn't necessarily say that it works in her favor. She sounds a tad wooden in a performance, more like she's narrating a documentary than being a real person you're talking to. Nachdem Berlin General Luther Brand seiner Macht enthoben hatte, wurde ein neuer General geschickt, um den Aufstand in Paris niederzuschlagen. Er hält sich auf einem Zeppelin mit dem Namen Der Nachtfalter auf. Though, I guess it fits, considering a whole personality is merely a facade to lull you into false sense of security so she can betray you later on. Which is kind of a German mossman from Half-Life 2 in that regard. Unsurprisingly, she always loses a French accent, but surprisingly, they used the original audio for her in some of the last cutscenes. They do sound rather similar, so I only noticed it because she suddenly had a really thick accent that wasn't there before. Du liebst mir aber noch immer, oder? Du liebst mir aber noch immer, oder? I genuinely don't know why they did this. If it's because she was already speaking German and sounded close enough despite the accent, then why did they also recast Lothar Brandt? Much like Juju, he too had kind of an accent originally, likely because he isn't a native German. Der Tag des jüngsten Gerichts rückt näher. Der Tag des jüngsten Gerichts rückt näher. Verdammt nochmal! Jawohl, komm, bereit mal an Juju. Verdammt nochmal! Jawohl, komm, bereit machen, Juju. I think replacing him was a very good idea, though, because I actually prefer his performance here. He may sound a bit stilted, but he does put a lot of energy to his performance, really chewing the scenery, especially during the final battle. And that's all the characters. There's also some side ones, but who are pretty much the same across both versions. Including the German soldiers, but I'll be damned if I talk about them for the hundredth time in a row. Though, I still love how they sometimes sound pretty goofy. As is tradition, there's also some audio quirks, but unlike in the new classes, they're far less terrible this time around. 
such as the fact that characters actually do speak Polish now. Well, unfortunately, not all the time. I mean, it's good that it's actually present here, but because it's not fully consistent, they might as well not even have bothered. They don't even translate what's being said in the subtitles either, unlike in the original, which I always hate. It just makes it impossible to know what's being said if you don't already speak the language. Just put the translation in parentheses behind it. The same goes for the French and Russian characters who randomly speak in the language at the ends of certain sentences. I wish media would stop doing that because, speaking as a bilingual person, it's actually really difficult to swap back and forth between two languages on a whim like that. Anyway, even here, some of the French was turned into German as well, for no apparent reason. The wine is excellent with the chocolate. The wine smells excellent with the chocolate. Speaking of translations, the Bob's Your Uncle joke wasn't translated well at all, pretty much losing all meaning. I mean, why did she even apologize here? Break into the towers, kill the Uber commandant, steal their keys, open the main computers, and Bob's your uncle. My uncle's name was Hubert, and he was killed by the Nazis. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, that, that's, an ex that's an expression Arthur and Kenneth <laughs> used. That... I was only joking, of course I know the expression about Uncle Bob. <laughs> But that's honestly it when it comes to the voice acting. Like I mentioned at the beginning, there really isn't much to talk about. Out of all the Wolfenstein games, this has among the fewest interesting interactions. But for a multiplayer focused game, that's fine. So let's end this video by taking a look at the censorship. Obviously, the whole crosses and similar imagery got replaced with the previously introduced triangle logos. I've noticed that some of them are upside down, but it's not nearly as big of an issue here as it was in 2009. Some of the new models look a bit awkward though, because this time they do put two of the eagle variants of the triangle right next to each other. However, for the very first time in the entire German Wolfenstein history, Nazis in this game are called exactly that. Habt ihr schon mal Nazis getötet? What a legitimately monumental milestone. It's been almost 30 years and for the first time, Germans get to shoot Nazis as well. Ironic then that this title is probably the most divorced from real world Nazis than any of the other ones in the series. It's completely over the top and fantastical, being much closer to 2009 than in order, especially since it's not connected to any real world events whatsoever. So this is, without a doubt, the one game where it makes absolutely no difference what you call them. Which is probably good, because they still call them the regime here sometimes. Don't look at me, I have absolutely no clue why. They already risked it up by calling them Nazis, so why not go the entire way? It's like in the Nicolaus, where they toned down Rip's bigotry, keeping some of it, just not all of it. And calling them Nazis on rare occasions is also as far as they were willing to go. The Viertes Reich, the sequel to the Third Reich, just becomes the second regime here. Und ein Viertes Reich zu gründen! Und ein zweites Regime zu gründen! It sounded strange to me at first, though I guess the original was just as weird. It just became more obvious here. Likewise, Sieg Heil is still replaced with a generic reading Victoria. <laughs> However, not when characters are talking about said second regime. In fact, terms like Herrenrasse, the master race, and Untermenschen, subhumans, also appear here. So, were they willing to risk even more then? No, because the Führer Hitler is still the Chancellor Heiler. 
Ihr seid die Töchter des Mannes, der dieses Dreckschwein Heiler getötet hat. Schließlich ist euer Vater der Mann, der ihren Kanzler getötet hat. And Arians are Germanics yet again. Du kämpfst gegen einen großen, indoktrinierten Germanen, der den Schmerz eine Sekunde länger aushält. And in certain instances, the word is even used when referring to the German language. You know German. Oh, we know enough. Ich spreche Germanisch. Ausreichend. But at least here I can sort of understand it, because it always sounds so out of place when characters ask someone if they speak German in German. So it seems that German Wolfenstein has almost arrived at the point where the rest of the world had been in the past decades, just not entirely. It's such a weird mixture of using different kinds of terms, some being controversial, some being euphemisms, as if they didn't want to fully commit either way. What an immeasurably disappointing ending this is. That they were able to get so far, but didn't stick the landing. Well, that's not quite right. Because Bethesda didn't just submit the partially censored German port to the Oscar, the German organization for video game ratings. They also handed in the uncensored original version, hooked crosses and all. And it actually got accepted. Not just this game, but every single Machine Games Wolfenstein title is now available to German players, both the cut and the uncut versions. A feud between censors and a game series about killing Nazis that's lasted for close to three decades is finally at an end. It began with Wolfenstein and it ended with Wolfenstein. And honestly, I'm pretty happy about that. I mean, the German port itself isn't anything special. The voice acting is quite nice, it's just that the censorship is, as always, a massive roadblock. But luckily, that's not something I will ever have to worry about ever again. I don't know when the next Wolfenstein game will release, but I do know that this time I won't have to talk about killing the wolves, nor the regime, nor the master state, but simply the Nazis. And that's how it should be. So let's take this moment to reminisce on all the titles we've taken a look at in these past videos. Let's recap where they landed on the scale of German ports. It began with Wolfenstein 3D for the Super Nintendo, which had its issues in the form of intrusive censorship, especially of the blood and gore. But they weren't lazy when removing it, having changed a lot of sprites. And even the mutant rats, as infamous as they are, added a lot of charm to the game. Then came Return to Castle Wolfenstein and was the first game to introduce the wolves. I've actually grown fond of it over the time, genuinely preferring the German voice acting over the original. Together with the censorship, it really does feel like a light-hearted, goofy take on the Nazis like in Hogan's Heroes. Just good fun all around. Afterwards came my favorite Wolfenstein game, 2009. This part was absolutely nothing special. Heck, it created the meh tier, that's how unremarkable it was. The voice acting was fine, the lack of blood and gore lazy, and the changed imagery uninspired. However, if I could mod the German audio into the original game, it would be my perfect version of it. The New Order took a few notes from 2009, but only the wrong ones, with the censorship being not only boring, but downright offensive in regards to removing Jewish references. The voice acting was the only thing that stood out positively in any way and saved it from being too bad to be good. However, the same couldn't be said for the old blood, since its voice actors were mostly the same across both versions, meaning only the intrusive censorship stuck out like an infected wound. The New Colossus suffered a similar fate, where the voice acting was excellent, yet was being held back by audio and translation issues. It felt sloppy and careless, which wasn't a good look for the bombastic sequel. Even the new logos, as creative as they tried to be with them, just didn't have the same impact as what they replaced. And finally, Youngblood, a game I'd undeniably put into the meh tier as well, just so that 2009 has a friend. You don't need to play this one, it doesn't offer you anything worthwhile. However, it does mark the beginning of a new era for Wolfenstein, which is ironic considering the game's themes of picking up the torch. And that's it. That was my favorite video game series of all time. I have to be honest, all things considered, the German versions weren't even all that bad. I mean, the worst ones are still leagues better than some of the best ports of Valve's games. I know there's still some left, like Wolfenstein RPG and the board game, but I don't think I'll take a look at those. Well, unless Bethesda sends me a copy of the board game, because I'm not buying all that for upwards of 200 bucks. I'd still love to hear what you think about all of this. Which German port was your favorite? Which did you dislike the most and why? 
please let me know down below as I always try to read as many comments as possible. Next up is a game series that a lot of you have been asking for already and another one that's close to my heart. Doom. Even though there's only around 4 to 5 games, I have a lot to say about them. And this won't even be the last time that we've heard of these voice actors, I can promise you that. So stay tuned for that, which you could do by subscribing to my channel. You can also leave a like and a comment and even consider supporting me directly on Patreon. All patrons get to see new episodes one week earlier than everybody else after all. But for now, I'd like to thank you very much for accompanying me on this journey as well as for watching, so have a wonderful day and goodbye.